How much space do you really need for a 3D printer setup? And what do you really need for 3D printing? It all depends on what you have and what you think you need. In this video, we will be exploring space restrictions like you might have in a studio apartment or if you're living in Japan. And then we'll talk about the bare bones of 3D printing. Hi everyone, I am Poto Chan and you are watching Poto Paint. Welcome to Poto Paint. Just a quick apology to my viewers for not posting in a while. I came down with a nasty cold that prevented me from releasing new content. Now, let's get started. This is the space we will be exploring and we'll see exactly how much we can cram in here. This room is shared between my wife and I, and I have technically monopolized a fair chunk of space. Our room is a tiny nine square meters. This might be normal in Japan, but in Australia, this would be your bathroom. The desk space you saw in a previous video is my current space in Australia. The first section is my 120 by 45 by 70 centimeters, or 0.38 cubic meters of space. It's a tiny space indeed. After a bit of resin, the space fills up fast with my wash and cure station, then my new printer, and finally, my homemade airbrush booth. There is a little bit of space for some alcohol in the front and more resin at the back. And if that's all you need, then that is the end. In my case, I have a whole lot of goodies and an extra 70 by 70 by 40 centimeters or about 0.2 cubic meters of space left. Let's have a quick look at what we have here. I have a section for non-3D printer related items, some canvases for a future painting project, some 300 milliliters of common paint colors, gloves and repair accessories, and that's just the first trolley. On the second trolley, we have painting tools, inks, my 7.2 meter hose, and alcohol tools and accessories. Then in the final space between the trolleys is my everything toolbox at the bottom, and finally, the distilled water and secondary alcohol container. My primary alcohol container is in the hall closet, and my air compressor is next to the toilet for noiseless airbrushing. You may notice that this setup is different from this setup. That's because I gave away my first printer, the Halot Mage 8K from Creality, and got myself a Saturn IV Ultra from Elegoo. It wasn't a printer I needed, but it was the printer I deserved. The Mage 8K is not a bad printer. In fact, it worked fine, with a few modifications. The first, it needed its own ventilation system. The second, I had to add a heating element to the resin tray. It will fail to print any time your room temperature is below 25 degrees centigrade, and you have to keep it on the whole time. So when it is cold, the heating element is a must-have. Otherwise, it's a great printer. And as a first 3D printer, it was not too expensive. I only ever buy things on sale, and the Hollow Mage was priced well for the sale price of 39,900 yen, which is about $420. Right now, the Mage 8K is not available in Japan. And surprise, surprise, the 8K is well over $950 in Australia. You can get better printers for much cheaper. I did indeed buy it twice, because sometimes you get a Monday printer. This means the printer had some defects. Yes, it also included the wash and cure station, so I had to send both back and get replacements. If you remember, in a past video, I talked about temperature as a reason for failed printing and the need for a heating element for some printers. The advantage Elegoo printers have is that the printer naturally warms up the resin after about 20 minutes. And if you use a heating element to warm the resin bottle, you can start printing much sooner. You might be thinking, why do you need so much stuff, Podochan? Well, the answer is simple. I love to immerse myself in whatever it is I do. There is nothing in my collection I haven't used. Gloves are for handling resin and cleaning. 300 milliliter paints are for large objects and future dioramas. Alcohol is for washing prints, the build plate, the resin tray, and making airbrush paints. Repair kits are naturally for repairs. My toolbox is for any kind of work around the house, whether it be building new furniture or fixing a squeaky ladder for the bed. But let's get back on track. What do you really need for 3D printing? It comes down to eight things. 
One is the 3D printer. You need that. Two is alcohol for washing and cleaning. I prefer ethanol. Three is a big enough container for washing. Four is a UV light that costs about 10 bucks. Five is a cheap funnel. Six is nitrile gloves for handling. Seven is a container for used alcohol. And lastly, eight, you need printing resin. The UV light and wash container are good substitutes for the wash and cure station. I don't have one in Australia, and I don't need it. The only real reason you need a wash and cure station is if you are printing massive amounts of figurines or really large models. You will be using large amounts of alcohol for cleaning and will need multiple bottles for storage. The money you'd use for a wash and cure station is better spent on resin. But if you are feeling super lazy, you can always get a motorized display stand and cure your figurines that way and use a cheap electric whisk when washing your minis. It'll be much cheaper than the wash and cure station. Next to the printer, your biggest expenses will be the resin and the alcohol. Alcohol is easy enough. Depending on where you live, alcohol is usually readily available at reasonable prices. Links in the description below. And you can use alcohol multiple times before needing more. Resin is a tough buy. Prices always fluctuate, and you really have to hunt around for the best prices. For Australia, Amazon is way too expensive. You can get between $15 and $17 per kilo on AliExpress if you're willing to buy in bulk and wait for a sale. Otherwise, you're looking at $37 or more per bottle. Everywhere else in the world, you're looking at around $12 in the US, $16 in Canada, 13 pounds in the UK, and 14 euro in the rest of Europe. And you might ask yourself, can my 10-year-old use 3D printers? The answer is yes, absolutely. I have students who are 10 years old and they use the water washable resin. No problem at all. You just need to teach them basic resin management and it'll be fine. If you made it this far, thank you so much staying tuned until the end. Keep creating and keep painting to bring your visions to life, one layer at a time. See you in the next one.